Hello everyone. In today's class, we are going to discuss Taylor's theorem for function of one variable. So, the statement of the theorem is, suppose f of x is a function which is defined on the closed interval a comma b and satisfying the condition that is the continuous derivatives of f of x that is f of x is continuous f dash that is first derivative is continuous second derivative is continuous like this up to n so nth derivative is also continuous in the closed interval a comma b so the statement of the first one is uh, all the functions that is f first derivative second derivative third derivative fourth order derivative etc up to nth derivative all of them are continuous in the closed interval a comma b and second condition is the first nth derivatives are differentiable in the open interval a comma b that means your f f dash f double dash all of them are having derivative right then there exists c which lies in between a and b such that your f of b can be written as f of a plus b minus a into f dash of a that is first derivative of f of x at a plus b minus a whole square by 2 factorial into f double dash of a plus etc up to b minus a whole to the power of n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 factorial into n minus 1th derivative at a plus b minus a whole to the power of n divided by n factorial into nth derivative at a point c at a point c where c lies in between a and b so this is the statement of taylor's theorem taylor's theorem for one variable right so your f of b will be equal to f of a plus b minus a into f dash of a plus b minus a whole square by 2 factorial into f double dash of a etc up to b minus a whole to the power of n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 factorial into nth derivative n minus 1th derivative at a plus b minus a whole to the power of n divided by n factorial into nth derivative at c in fact this is nothing but reminder right this is nothing but remainder you have expressed f of b in terms of this right and uh, you left out with some reminder that reminder is this it's a polynomial uh, in, in fact this is called as expression um, or expressing this f of b as a polynomial and this polynomial is called as taylor's polynomial taylor's polynomial with reminder this now let us prove this how to prove we'll do one thing right in place of a we'll put x in place of a we'll replace this by x and we'll take instead of nth derivative at c as some a and we'll send all of these two to this side then what you'll get f of b because you are replacing a by x minus f of x minus b minus x into f dash of x minus b minus x whole square by 2 factorial into f double dash of x etc b minus x whole to the power of n minus 1 by n minus 1 factorial into nth n minus 1th derivative at x minus b minus a whole to the power of n divided by n factorial into a who is defining this we ourselves we are assuming that g of x is this and a is a constant such that g of a equal to g of b so all these conditions are i mean they have been put, put forth by us only we have assumed that g of x is a function like this and a is a constant where g of a will be equal to g of b that means at a and b your function has same value right now what is your g of a if you put 
x equal to a, then you'll get your g of a will be equal to f of b minus f of a minus b minus a into f dash of a minus b minus a whole square by 2 factor into f double dash of a, etc. up to minus b minus a whole to the power of n minus 1 by n minus 1 factor into n minus 1th derivative at a minus b minus a whole to the power of n by n factorial into a. This is what we are going to get. If you replace x by a, and what is your g of b? If you put x equal to b in this, then you'll get f of b minus f of b. So this becomes 0. b minus b becomes 0. b minus b becomes 0. b minus b. All of this will become 0. So all of this will become 0. And since g of a equal to g of b, your g of a will also be equal to 0 because your g of b is 0. That means your f of b minus of this, etc. will be equal to 0. Right? Because of this condition, we have assumed that g of a is equal to g of b and we are getting g of b equal to 0. Therefore, g of a is also 0, but g of a is this. Right? Now, what you do is send all of these two to that side except f of b. Then all these minus sign will become plus. So that your f of b will be equal to f of a plus b minus a into f dash of a, etc. up to right b minus a whole to the power of n by n factorial into a. Now, you got this much. See, compare with the statement of the theorem. Right? Actually, we need to get this answer. But we got this one. Both are one and the same, except here you are having a and here you are having nth derivative at c. So if you can prove that your a equal to nth derivative at c, then our proof is over. So we have to prove that nth derivative at c is nothing but a. All right, let's prove that one. Now, remember, as we, uh, I mean, as the statement of the theorem says, all the functions f, f dash, f double dash, etc. nth derivative are continuous in the closed interval a comma b. Now see here, your f of x, f dash of x, etc. up to nth derivative are continuous. Then what about your g of x? See, your f of b is constant. Constant functions are always continuous. Am I right? Constant functions are always continuous. Your f of x is continuous and your f dash of x is continuous and this is a linear equation. It's a polynomial. Polynomials are continuous. Right? And this is again a polynomial quadratic equation. This is continuous. And from this we know that f double dash of x is also continuous. And this is a polynomial of degree n minus 1. Again, this is continuous. And this is also continuous. And last one right actually this should be x this is a polynomial polynomials are always continuous and this is constant so continuous function minus continuous function or product of continuous functions are always continuous therefore the sum or difference of all these functions which are continuous is again continuous therefore g of x is continuous right so what do you approve? Your g of x is continuous because your f of b, which is a constant, constant functions are always continuous. And by the statement, your f of x is continuous, right? This is a polynomial, therefore it is continuous. This is again continuous by the definition, by the statement of the theorem. This is again a polynomial, so it is continuous. And this is continuous because again from this uh, statement, etc. This is again a polynomial. It is continuous. And this one is continuous from the definition. This is a polynomial. Therefore, it is continuous. So difference and product of two continuous functions are always continuous. Therefore, the difference or product of these functions are always continuous. Therefore, we approved g of x is continuous in the closed interval a comma b. Further, what is the derivative of f of b? It is 0 because derivative of constant function is 0. 
n. What is the derivative of f of x? Yes, it exists. It exists in the open interval a comma b. That given by the statement of the theorem, it is differentiable. So derivative of f of x exists. And what about this? Yes, b minus x is a polynomial. So derivative exists. And what about this f dash of x? They are given derivative uh, of the f dash of x exists. We can further differentiate this by the statement. Right? Then this is again a polynomial. So it is differentiable. This is again differentiable from the second uh, uh, condition of the theorem. Right? Etc. This is again differentiable because it is polynomial. Then this is also differentiable because of the statement of the theorem. Right? Further, this is polynomial, therefore it is differentiable. So, product or difference of differentiable function is again differentiable. Therefore, g of x is differentiable in the open interval, a comma b. Right? So, because these functions are continuous, your g of x is also continuous. These functions are differentiable. Therefore, your g of x is also differentiable in the open interval. And further, we know that our g of a equal to g of b. So, all the conditions which are required for Rolle's theorem are satisfied. The function is continuous. g of x is continuous in the closed interval a comma b. g of x is differentiable in the open interval a comma b. And value of the function at the end points, that is g of a, must be same as g of b. All the conditions of Rolle's theorem are satisfied. Therefore, by Rolle's theorem, there exists a point C in between A and B such that derivative at that point is 0. So we got G dash of C equal to 0 where C lies in between A and B from Rolle's theorem. Remember, our F is not satisfying these conditions. G is satisfying. Right? Our f is continuous and differentiable. But your f of a need not be equal to f of b. Your f dash of a need not be equal to f dash of b. Your f, f dash all are satisfying these two conditions. But the last condition which is needed for applying Rolle's theorem or not, I mean, need not be true here. So that's the reason we have constructed a function g of x which satisfies all the three conditions of Rolle's theorem and by Rolle's theorem, there exists C such that g dash of C equal to 0. But what is your g dash of x from this? Differentiate this. Right? Now let us differentiate. Derivative of f of b is 0. Derivative of f of x is f dash of x. Now, because it is uh, both are functions of x, we have to apply product rule. Right? Let me take a bracket minus. Right? Let me keep f dash of x as it is. f dash of x as it is. What is the derivative of b minus x? Derivative of b is 0. And derivative of x is 1 with minus sign. So you'll get minus f dash of x. Now let me keep b minus x as it is now. b minus x. What is the derivative of f dash of x? It is f double dash of x. It is f double dash of x. So we have differentiated this. Now let us differentiate this. Again here it is product of two function. Right? So let us keep f double dash of x as it is. Differentiate b minus x whole square. It is of the form x to the power of n. We know how to differentiate x to the power of n. n into x to the power of n minus 1. By that formula b minus x whole square will be 2 into b minus x whole to the power of 2 minus 1 which is 1 divided by 2 factorial is 2 plus uh, sorry forget the power leave the power now remaining is b minus x what is the derivative of b minus x derivative of b is 0 and derivative of minus x is minus 1 so that is why we got minus 1 here plus now keep first one as it is that is b minus x whole square by 2 factorial as it is differentiate f double dash of x what is the derivative of f double dash of x? Derivative of f double dash of x is f triple dash of x. f triple dash of x. You go on proceed like this. Now, we'll differentiate this, the last uh, two terms. Here also, remember, uh, here also, remember, this is product of two 
functions of x so we have to apply product rule let us keep this f to the power of i mean n minus 1 to derivative of x as it is differentiate this this will be n minus 1 into b minus x whole to the power of n minus 2 divided by n minus 1 factorial right n minus 1 into b minus x whole to the power of n minus 2 by n minus 1 factorial again you have to leave the power if you leave the power you will get b minus x what is the derivative of b minus x derivative of b is 0 derivative of minus x is minus 1 so you will get minus 1 here now keep the first function as it is b minus x whole to the power of n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 factorial keep that one as it is now differentiate this what is the derivative of n minus 1 the derivative of x it is nth derivative derivative of second is third derivative of third is fourth derivative of fourth one is fifth similarly derivative of n minus 1 is nth derivative so you'll get nth derivative minus now see here here in the last term a and n factorial are constants a and n factorial are constant so we don't have to apply product rule so we'll keep a and n factorial as it is we'll apply product rule i mean sorry we'll apply derivative for this so what is the derivative n into b minus x whole to the power of n minus 1 n into b minus x whole to the power of n minus 1 into forget the power so you have to differentiate b minus x by chain rule derivative of b is 0 derivative of minus x is minus 1 so you got minus 1 now let us simplify see here this is 0 no need to worry about this now if you multiply by minus sign this one minus into minus plus plus f dash of x minus f dash of x cancels then if you multiply this by minus sign this becomes minus am i right when you multiply this by minus sign now this 2 2 get cancels right when you multiply this by minus sign and this by minus sign this becomes plus am i right here this becomes plus so this is plus b minus x into f double dash of x and this is minus b minus x into f double dash of x so these two get cancels similarly all of them will get cancels right this one also get cancels with previous one only these two terms will remain but remember here you have to multiply this by minus sign so you'll get minus here and this minus into minus becomes plus so that is what so minus b minus x whole to the power of n minus 1 by n minus 1 factorial into nth derivative of x plus now you know n factorial means it is n into n minus 1 factorial we can write this one as n into n minus 1 factorial now n n cancels right we can write n factorial as n into this n n cancel so you left out with b minus x whole to the power of n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 factorial into a but remember by rolls theorem you got a point c at which derivative is 0 that is g dash of c equal to 0 from this what is your g dash of c it is minus b minus c whole to the power of n minus 1 by n minus 1 factorial into nth derivative of c plus b minus c whole to the power of n minus 1 divided by n minus 1 factorial into a equal to 0. Now what is the common factor in these two? Yes, minus b minus c whole to the power of n minus 1 by n minus 1 factorial is common. If you take that common factor, then this minus of this will come out. You will left out with nth derivative at c. And since you have taken minus outside, here minus will come, minus this comes out a will remain equal to 0 so product of these two must be equal to 0 when the product of two terms are 0 either this is equal to 0 or this one is equal to 0 one of them must be 0 but this cannot be 0 by this will become 0 remember your n minus 1 factorial is constant and it will never give you 0 so only term which which may give you is b minus c but b minus c will be equal to 0 means b minus c will be 0 means b must be equal to c but that is not possible because rolls theorem says your c lies in between a and b that means your a is less than c and c is less than b 
so c will never be equal to b so since because we, if this becomes zero means b must be equal to c then only this will become zero but we are having b is greater than c therefore this will never become zero that means only option which left out is this must be equal to zero so this is equal to zero means your minus a is n that one to this side that will become a equal to nth derivative of c now substitute this in the equation one that is what you are required Taylor polynomial and this completes the proof this is what we need to prove now remember Taylor's theorem is also known as generalized mean value theorem generalized mean value theorem right how see if you restrict yourselves to only for first derivative right only for first derivative that means if you restrict yourselves to up to only this up to only here then this c will become uh, this a will become c right the last derivative should be found at c where c lies in between a and b because we are finding only first order derivative these terms will not come into picture okay now only up to here now send this one to this side that becomes f of b minus f of a f of b minus f of a is equal to b minus a now send that b minus a also to this side that becomes divided by b minus a is equal to f dash of c you will get what is this this is what your lagrange's mean value theorem isn't it first mean value theorem so if you're instead of considering nth derivatives if you consider only f of x is diff continuous and differentiable then f dash exists and f dash uh, c will be equal to this so this is the extension of that uh, lagrange mean value theorem that's why it is called as generalized mean value theorem generalized mean value theorem now instead of considering from closed interval a comma b let's consider from x naught to x then this can be rewritten as f of x equal to f of x naught plus x minus x naught into f dash of x naught plus x minus x naught whole square by 2 factorial into f double dash of x etc or you can write this one in the summation form also like this summation i from 1 to n minus 1 f ith derivative of f at x naught divided by i for i factorial into x minus x naught to the power of i plus remainder plus remainder you can write like this now Taylor's infinite series expansion of f of x at x equal to x naught means you are not going to get the remainder it will continue that the expansion goes on right because it has to come it is an infinite series right so instead of this derivative at c i mean uh, here uh, in the case of a uh, series expansion right you're not going to get c here right that will be given by same formula but with infinitely many terms f of x equal to f of x naught plus x minus x naught f dash of x naught this is called as uh, taylor zero uh, zero taylor uh, zero order taylor formula if you consider up to here it is considered i mean it is called as first order taylor series and uh, if you can find up to here it is called as second order taylor polynomial if you find up to uh, order three then it is third order taylor polynomial etc right this is nth order polynomial up to here and you can write this in the summation form like this then one particular case of Taylor's the, uh, infinite series is or uh, Taylor's uh, polynomial is McLaren's polynomial or uh, the special case of Taylor's infinite series is McLaren's infinite series expansion instead of considering x naught we'll find at zero so your uh, interval is zero comma x If replace in this, you'll get 
McLaren's uh, polynomial instead of Taylor polynomial. If you replace zero here, you'll get McLaren's infinite series expansion. That is, you have to replace x naught by zero. That's it. Wherever x naught is there, that becomes zero. So x minus zero is x. X minus zero all square is x square by two factorial, etc. So if you find that zero, that is your McLaren's infinite series expansion. And if you find at some other point, that is your tailless infinite series expansion. So these two formulas are important for us. And we'll solve some problems on these. Now let's move on to problem. Find the third order Taylor polynomial at x equal to 0 for this function. That means we have to go up to x minus x naught whole cube by 3 factorial into f triple dash of x naught. Up to that point you have to find. So if you want to find up to that point, you need f of x naught, f dash of x naught, f double dash of x naught, f triple dash of x naught you need. That means you need third order derivative. Let's do that one. Right? Here your x naught is 0. So this is your f of x. We can write that one as 1 plus x whole to the power of half. First, find out f of x naught, that is f of 0. f of 0 is 1 plus 0, that is 1. Now, differentiate this. As usual, x to the power of n form. Half into 1 plus x whole to the power of half minus 1. Half minus 1 is minus half. So, you'll get half into 1 plus x whole to the power of minus half. That is your f dash of x. But we need f dash at 0 at this point. So, f dash of 0 equal to half into 1 plus 0. 1 to the power of anything is 1, so 1 into half is half, we got. Now differentiate again this with respect to x. Again, this minus half comes out, half into minus half, into 1 plus x whole to the power of minus half minus 1. That is minus 3 by 2. Half into minus half is minus 1 by 4. We need this at 0. So put x equal to 0 in this. Minus 1 by 4 into 1 plus 0 to the power of this. This gives you minus 1 by 4 only. Now again differentiate this with respect to x. That gives you third order derivative. Minus 1 by 4 into minus 3 by 2. This power comes out into 1 plus x to the power of minus 3 by 2 minus 1. This product of these two gives you 3 by 8 and 1 plus x whole to the power of minus 5 by 2. But we need f triple dash at 0. So Put x equal to 0 in this, you will get 3 by 8. Now we know the formula, right? The Taylor's infinite series expansion of f of x at x equal to 0 is f of x equal to f of 0 plus x minus 0 into f dash of 0 plus x minus 0 whole square by 2 factorial into f double dash of 0, etc. That means uh, we have replaced x naught by 0, that's it. Now substitute all these values in this. What is your f of x? Square root of 1 plus x equal to f of 0 is 1 plus x minus 0 is x, f dash of 0 is 1 by 2 plus x square by 2 factorial is 2 into f double dash of 0 is minus 1 by 4 plus x cube by 3 factorial that is 6 into f triple dash is at 0 is 3 by 8 etc. So square root of 1 plus x is equal to this after simplification so this is the series expansion of this function like this we can expand any function in terms of a taylor series or mclaren series like this right now let us move on to another problem find the fifth taylor polynomial that means we have to differentiate up to degree phi at x equal to pi by 2 for cos x now f of x equal to cos x. So what is your f of pi by 2? Your x naught is pi by 2 here. f of pi by 2 is cos pi by 2, which is 0. Then f dash of x, derivative of cos x is minus sin x. So f dash of pi by 2 is minus sin pi by 2. And sin pi by 2 is 1, so you'll get minus 1. Then what is the derivative of sin x? It is cos x, so minus will remain as it is. f double dash of pi by 2 is equal to minus cos pi by 2, which is 0. Again, differentiate. Derivative of cos x is minus sin x. Minus into minus plus sin x will become. Therefore, derivative of this at pi by 2 is sin pi by 2, which is 1. 
then again differentiate sin x which is cos x so f a fourth order derivative at pi by 2 is cos pi by 2 which is 0 now again differentiate this you will get minus sin x that is your fifth derivative of f of x right at pi by 2 it becomes minus 1 now what is the taylor series expansion we know the formula it is f of x equal to f of pi by 2 plus x minus pi by 2 into f dash of pi by 2 plus x minus pi by 2 whole square by 2 factorial into f double dash of pi by 2 etc substitute all these in this you will get what is your f of x cos x f of pi by 2 is 0 plus x minus pi by 2 into f dash of pi by 2 is minus 1 then plus x minus pi by uh, here x minus pi by 2 whole square this is not x square x minus pi by 2 whole square x minus pi by 2 whole square divided by 2 into f double dash of pi by 2 is 0 so 0 plus x minus pi by 2 whole to the power of 3 by 6 into third order derivative at pi by 2 is 1 and this is also x minus pi by 2 whole to the power of 4 x minus pi by 2 whole to the power of 4 and here this will become 0 no need to worry divided by 4 factorial 4 factorial is 24 into fourth order derivative is 0 plus x minus pi by 2 whole to the power of 5 divided by 5 factorial 5 factorial is 120 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 am i right 5 factorial means 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 that gives you 120 multiplied by fifth order derivative at pi by 2 is minus 1 minus 1 simplified you will get cos x equal to this so this is the taylor series expansion for cos x right depending on the uh, problem we have to find whether uh, it's a third order fourth order fifth order taylor polynomial at the given point now let us move on to another problem expand log of 1 plus cos x up to the term containing x to the power of 4 using McLaren's theorem. So we have to use McLaren series expansion here. And you should note that in the case of McLaren's expansion, we'll consider our x naught as 0. So we have to find that 0. Let us call this function as some f of x. We need f of 0. So put x equal to 0, cos 0 cos 0 is 1 so 1 plus 1 is 2 so log 2 you will get now differentiate this derivative of log is 1 by 1 plus cos x into forget log derivative of 1 is 0 derivative of cos x is minus sin x now we need f dash of 0 that is minus sin 0 by 1 plus cos 0 sin 0 is 0 0 by anything is 0 now apply u by v rule for this then we can find the derivative second order derivative denominator square denominator into derivative of numerator what is the derivative of sin x cos x minus numerator that is minus sin x into derivative of denominator derivative of 1 is 0 derivative of cos x is minus sin x now if you multiply this with this minus 1 into cos x minus cos x minus cos x into cos x minus cos square x minus into minus into minus you'll get minus sine square x if you take minus common you'll get cos square x plus sine square x square sine square x which is one and in these two minus is common if you take it out then you'll get one plus cos x divided by one plus cos x whole square so one one plus cos x cancels you get this much we need f double dash at zero put x equal to zero you'll get cos zero here so one plus one is two so you'll get minus 1 by 2. Again, differentiate this. Right? We'll differentiate by u by v rule. Denominator square. Then denominator into derivative of 1 is 0. I kept this minus sign as it is. Okay? Then numerator into derivative of denominator. Derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of cos x is minus sin x. Minus into minus plus sin x. 0 into anything is 0. This minus will remain as it is. So minus sin x by this. But we need triple dash of this at 0. So put x equal to 0. 
sin 0 is 0, 0 by anything is 0. Now again differentiate this with respect to x. So denominator square, that is 1 plus cos x square whole square. So you will get 1 plus cos x whole to the power of 4. Then denominator, that is 1 plus cos x whole square into derivative of numerator, derivative of sin x is cos x minus numerator sin x into derivative of denominator 2 into 1 plus cos x forget power derivative of 1 is 0 derivative of cos x is minus sin x now here 1 plus cos x 1 plus cos x is common let me take it out so here 1 plus cos x is remaining cos x into 1 is cos x cos x into cos x will become cos square x then here 2 times minus n minus becomes plus this has come out sin x into sin x is sin square x so 2 sin square x will come i have written that one as sin square x plus sin square x square 2 sin square x square because you know that cos square x plus sin square x is 1 i can replace this one by 1 and 1 1 plus cos x cancels so remaining is this minus sign remains as it is cos x plus 1 plus sin square x divided by this but we need the derivative at 0 so put x equal to 0 you'll get this cos 0 is 1 sin 0 is 0 so 1 plus 1 is 2 1 plus 1 is 2 2 2 cancels you'll get minus 1 now we know what is the mclaren's infinite series expansion that is f of x equal to f of 0 plus x into f dash of 0 plus x square by 2 factorial into f double dash of 0 etc so what is your f of x log of 1 plus cos x what is your f of 0 log plus x into what is your f dash of 0 your f dash of 0 is 0 plus x square by 2 factorial is 2 into f double dash of 0 is minus 1 by 2 plus x cube by 3 factorial is 6 into f f triple dash is uh, 0 is 0 plus x to the power of 4 by 4 factorial is 24 into fourth derivative at 0 is minus 1 etc so that gives you after simplification this so this is the mclaren series expansion of log of 1 plus cos x so like this we can find the infinite series expansion of any function now we'll see one more problem expand e to the power of x cos x up to the term containing x to the power of i using mclaren's theorem so let us call this one as f of x and we need f of 0 e to the power of 0 into cos 0 e to the power of 0 is 1 1 into cos 0 is 1 1 into 1 is 1 now we have to apply product rule for this so keep e to the power of x as it is derivative of cos x is minus sin x plus e to the power of x uh, cos x as it is derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x but in these two e to the power of x is common so you will get cos x minus sin x but we need this derivative at 0 therefore put x equal to 0 here e to the power of 0 into cos 0 minus sin 0 cos 0 is 1 sin 0 is 0 1 into 1 gives you 1 now again apply I um, mean again differentiate this keep e to the power of x as it is derivative of cos x is minus sin x minus derivative of sin x is cos x plus keep this one as it is differentiate e to the power of x derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x right now in these two e to the power of x is common if you take it out then this will come plus this will come but these two get cancels minus minus two times e to the power of x into sin x but we need this at zero so minus 2 e to the power of 0 sin 0. Sin 0 is 0. 0 into anything becomes 0. Now again, dif differentiate this by product rule. I'll keep minus 2 as it is. e to the power of x kept as it is. Derivative of sin x is cos x plus sin x as it is. Derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x. In these two, e to the power of x is common. You take it out. You're left out with this. But we need this at 0. So minus 2 e to the power of 0, cos 0 plus sin 0. Cos 0 is 1, sin 0 is 0. So 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 into 1, 1 into minus 2, that gives you minus 2. Now, again differentiate this by product rule. Minus 2 remains outside. 
e to the power of x as it is, derivative of cos x is minus sin x plus derivative of sin x is cos x plus keep this one as it is, derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x. Now in these two e to the power of x is common, so take it out. You left out with this plus this. <coughs> and these two get cancelled. 2 times cos x, 2 into 2, 4. We need at 0. If you put 0 to x, then you'll get this much. But cos 0 is 1 and e to the power of 0 is also 1. So you'll get minus 4. Now again differentiate this. Then we'll get the fifth derivative. Because we have to find the term containing up to x to the power of 5. Now minus 4 as it is, e to the power of x into derivative of cos x is minus sin x plus cos x as it is, derivative of e to the power of x is e to the power of x. e to the power of x is common in these two. Take it out. Now find that 0. That means put x equal to 0 here. Minus 4 into e to the power of 0 into this. So this is 0 and this is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 into minus 4 is minus 4. Now, what is the McLaren's infinite series expansion formula? We know that is f of x equal to f of 0 plus x into f dash of 0, etc. Substitute in this. What is your f of x? e to the power of x into cos x, which is equal to f of 0 is 1 plus x into f dash of 0 is 1 plus x square by 2 factorial is 2 into f double dash of 0 is 0 plus x cube by 3 factorial is 6 into f double dash of 0 is sorry f triple dash of 0 is minus 2 plus x to the power of 4 by 4 factorial is 24 into fourth derivative at 0 is minus 4 plus x to the power of 5 by 5 factorial is 120 into fifth derivative at 0 is minus 4 etc. Simplify this you will get this. So this is the series expansion of e to the power of x cos x. So you need to remember one thing that for Taylor polynomial, they will give you x naught. It need not be 0. It might be anything. Right? But for McLaren series, obviously our x naught will be 0. So I had given few more problems. You work out them and uh, write them as assignment. We will continue in the next session. Thank you.